Hey everybody, you asked for it, so for today, Rado runs through the ages, which will be a story of civilization, and also, fair warning, will also be a choking hazard, so do not play this with your three-year-olds. I wouldn't recommend that anyway, even despite the choking hazard, because this is a big, complex, hairy, meaty monster of a game that does a pretty good job of replicating the story of a civilization as we grow from our, you know, our age of antiquity, you know, the ancient Greeks and Mesopotamians and Babylonians all the way up to modern day with our jets and our rockets and our computers. It really captures the scope of the evolution of our modern society from very humble beginnings. And let's jump right into it. Oh, no, actually, no. Before we jump right into it, I'm going to a few caveats. First of all, I'll be doing, as always, a two-player demonstration run-through of the game. I will be playing the advanced version of the game. Not the full game, and not the simple game, but the kind of the medium. There's a simple medium, which they call advanced for some reason, and full game. The, the simple game basically means we just play through the antiquities and the Middle Ages. The advanced game, which is what I'm going to do, is the Antiquities, Middle Ages, and the Renaissance. And the full game is Antiquities, Middle Ages, Renaissance, and the modern era. So I'm only going to be going, and we'll, we'll see how that goes. So, because, you know, full game is crazy long. I mean, I, it, 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 you know, the advanced game is pretty long. The full game is just is crazy long. It adds a couple little extra complexities. But for the most part, the advanced game demonstrates all the core features of the game. With one minor exception. I, in addition to playing a two-player advanced game, I am also playing with an official variant that is listed. The rules actually come with a whole page full of different variants. Easier, no ganging up, peaceful, um, bonus, you know, etc., etc. I'm playing the peaceful variant, which if, you're, if your group likes to play nice, this variant lets you focus on just building. Remove all aggression and war cards and also really all packed cards as well. We always play that way because Jen and I, there's nothing Jen and I hate more than spending hours, you know, putting all our blood, sweat, and tears, all our, our love and our hopes and our dreams into building the wonderful civilization only to have, to have to go over and tear down and destroy and ruin the other person. Because that's just mean. And Jen and I love each other. We don't want to be mean to each other. Now, so this game has a healthy, healthy dose of just punch you in the face type stuff because you can spend a lot of effort building up your military for the sole purpose of plundering and going to war over culture or war or go to a holy war or do an armed intervention or gosh, I mean, gosh, there's all kinds of nasty things. Where are they all? Oh, go to raids and where's the, yeah, all right, well, they're all over here. And basically all these are, all these cards gone. Don't care for them. Don't want them. So I'll be playing the peaceful variant. All those are gone. War was good for absolutely nothing. Say it again. So um, I won't be demonstrating any attacks. Well, that's not entirely true. Because even in the peaceful variant, just because Jen and I won't attack each other, we can coexist peacefully, doesn't mean we won't still build up our military might. Because the greater military might we have, certain world events will go in favor of whoever it has the strongest military. And also, a strong military means that over the course of the game, you can colonize the poor indigenous peoples of the world and take their resources. So just because Jen and I are not attacking each other doesn't mean we will still just be total jerks to the rest of the world. Okay, so advanced, peaceful, two-player, Let's go. Okay, so at the beginning of the game, setup has, we, we start the game in the A, the Age of Antiquities, also known as Era Number Zero. And there are 13 randomly selected civics cards out here. You know, actions we can take, wonders of the world we could build, ancient leaders who could lead our society. <clears throat> and the very first turn of the game is a very special one. All we're going to do is basically grab some of these cards and kind of set the tone for the development of our civilization. And what about our civilization? Well, it's over here. There's several things on our little player board and everybody starts in the exact same circumstance. We have all these yellow discs here which represent our future potential to expand our society and our population. At the beginning of the game, we only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have a population of seven. Whatever you want to consider that. 70,000, 700,000, 7 million, I don't know, whatever. Probably smaller than 7 million. We have a, sm we have a small population and 
so, you know, one seventh of our population is devoted to philosophy because this is really the ancient times of the ancient philosophers and we're just starting to figure out the world. That's where the, the game starts. So one seventh of our population is devoted to philosophy, which generates science. Interestingly, no portion of our starting society is devoted to religion. But we have this, guy, this layabout guy who's not devoted to anything. We could, right off the bat, in our first main or move game, we could have him devoted to religion and get some of that old-time religion, because it's good enough for me. We we'll pray to Aphrodite. Where's the see-through nighty? Okay, sorry, I'm very old. Nobody remembers those songs. Anyway, so you know, we've got a guy who could add more to philosophy, more science, could get to religion, which increases our culture and our happiness because it is the opiate of the masses. And by the way, culture, that's the buzzword because victory points in this game are culture points. The, whoever has the most culture at the end of the game wins. So we could, you know, I could have this guy who's not assigned to anything go to religion. We also have agriculture. At the beginning of the game, two-sevenths of our society are devoted to growing food. Each one of these little discs generates one food every turn. And two-sevenths of our society is devoted to building, re to getting resources, raw materials. In this case, bronze, although that can upgrade later. So these two guys, every turn, generate one resource in the form of bronze. We also have one-seventh of our society is devoted to military. We, are, we have warriors. This guy is worth one military power. And then, like I said, I got this guy early in the game. I could get another one. Or I could get some more mines or some religion or whatever. And by the same token, we can grow our population by getting these guys, moving them up here, and then assigning them to things as well. That's like the main engine of the game, but I'll demonstrate that shortly. Other thing, at the beginning of the game, I am a despot. But I am not an evil despot. I am a good despot. And what despot means is it's a form of government, and this can change. It can become democracies or republics or monarchies, all kinds of stuff. The, um, you know, theocracies. And the different governments provide you different action points. At the beginning of the game, both Jen and I are despots, and that means we get six actions every turn, four of which are devoted to civic growth and two of which are devoted to military. Okay, and we also have a limit. We can have no more than two of any urban building. So we can't have more than two philosophy labs or two temples or later on two arenas or there's other types of special buildings as well. That's my situation. Jen's in the exact same situation. Let's go. You've been very patient so far. So the, as I mentioned before, the first turn of the game is a very special one. It's really just an extension of setup. We are going to play the antiquity round. Normally we do a whole bunch of stuff on our turns, but on the first round all we do is well, me as the first player, I get to take one card of these, and Jen as the second player could take one or two cards. Because what that means is on the first turn, even though I, as a despot I should have six actions, on my first turn I only have one. And on Jen as the second player, her first turn, she'll have two. Third player, if we had a third player, would have three and so on. Oopsie, and there they all go. So I have one action that I can spend to get one of these cards that have been randomly seeded. Every turn, every beginning of the game is going to be different. I mean, there's several that didn't even make it out onto the board. And because I only have one to spend, I can only come to these five slots because these ones all cost one. See, these ones cost two and these ones cost three. I can't afford them. So I can't start the Great Pyramids. I can't get Moses as a leader of my peoples. I have the choice of I could have a revolutionary idea, which will score us one science point. I could find some rich land, which makes it easier to build a mine or a farm. I could find the ideal building site, which would make it easier for me to build, say, a temple or another lab. I could start work on one of the ancient wonders of the world, the Colossus of Rhodes, which, it, which, will, co which will cost me six resources and will give me a bonus for colonization and will also provide culture that will last for the rest of the game. Every turn for the rest of the game, once I've built this, I'll be earning one culture, one point every turn. And it will also increase my military strength because, I mean, look at this thing. The ancient world, of course, they're going to be terrified of a society that built this thing. Look at it. It's crazy. Or I could make one of the great works of art, which will score me six points straight up. I can take any one of these things, and like I said, it will. If, if I take this, it'll really kind of focus me on that. If I take this, it'll focus me on that. But you know what? Just to demonstrate as many features as I can, I'm going to take the Colossus as an ancient wonder, and I'm going to start working on that. This is going to define my early game, trying to get this built so I can start getting the benefit from it. <clears throat> okay, and that was my first turn. Oh wait, at the end of my turn, see normally you do a bunch of stuff, and then at the end of your turn, you generate resources. So of all this stuff, I've only done one thing, which was, right there, take a card. But now, I still get to generate my resource. I do my production and maintenance. And so, let's do my production at the end of my turn. And what that means is, well, uh, first of all, I can generate, well actually, if I look over here, I can generate 
science, and culture, but only if I'm generating. Now, at the beginning of the game, remember, I have one lab. And that lab, every turn, generates one science for me. And that's represented up here. This meter right here is our science lab. The greater this is, if it were up here, that means every turn I generate seven science that we can use in a subsequent turn to make new discoveries. But at the beginning of the game, because I have one lab, or my science ability, or one philosophy, my science ability is one. And what that means is I'm gonna generate that now, so I come up here to my actual resource. I have one, si I've just earned, through my philosophical learnings, which is represented here, I've earned one science. And as long as I have this lab, it'll earn me one science every turn for the rest of the game. You can see I can store up to 40, although I'll use it a long time before then. So I've generated some science. Now I also get to generate culture. But at this point, at the beginning of the game, I have no means of generating culture. I don't have any religion. I haven't finished my Colossus yet. So I don't earn any culture. I don't earn any points. Now, after we're done with that, we start producing goods. I've got two farms, these two guys. So they generate two goods. These blue discs are a universal rep. They could represent anything. They could represent food. They could represent bronze. In this case, I've just generated two food. So, and we're done with that. Now, my society, I don't, I don't with only seven guys, I don't, have, these people can feed themselves. I don't have to worry about them. But the more society I have, you'll notice they start needing extra food. So over time, I'll start needing to, you can see farms produce, but then I have to pay consumption. But at the beginning of the game, and, and you lose points if you can't feed your people. At the beginning of the game, I have no needs for additional food, and that won't be the case for quite a while. Then, we are mines produced. Remember, I've got two bronze mines, so two more resources get generated. There we go. And, you know, one of these guys. And now, after I have mines produced, I pay corruption. Because the more you stockpile goods, the more chance there is that your society will become corrupt and will start stealing stuff. But right here, I'm at zero corruption. I'm not gonna hit real corruption till way over here. So I could generate a lot of goods before I start worrying about corruption and stockpile them. So I have generated my goods and it is truly the end of my turn now. And so the only thing I did this turn, I made some food, I made some bronze, I studied some philosophy, got a little bit of science, and we have started construction class. Oh, I should have mentioned, this isn't in the rules, but a lot of people do this. Put it down tapped to indicate that it is not built yet. Once you have finished building it, you can put it upright. That's a little pro tip, so you can remember that it's built. So this means it hasn't been built yet. That was my whole turn, hooray! And now it's Jen's turn. Remember, Jen's special first turn, she gets two actions to spend, which means she can either get two of these remaining ones or one of these. What do I think I want to do again? Well, I mean, two actions would be nice, but I think I'm gonna, she's going to spend two and grab a leader so I can demonstrate how leaders work. Um, and, you know, so I mean, with two, she could get the pyramid. She could start working on that, which gives her extra actions for the rest of the game. Or she could have, well, she has no reason she'd take this ideal building site because it would cost her two when she could get this one for one. But she instead is going to take a leader. That's, she wants to kickstart with a leader. And so the two she can afford, because that's how the random seating came up, are Homer and Moses. And again, these guys, you know, of course, you know, her first age is going to last for hundreds of years. And Moses, and well, depending on if you believe the Bible, Moses might live for hundreds of years. But these guys are not going to live for hundreds of years. But their teachings will. So if Jen takes one of these, you know, that sets the tone for a culture that, you know, echoes down through the ages. And Moses, taking him, will give Jen a permanent ability of increasing, basically, she can increase her population for less food than normal. Normally it costs two food to increase population. For her, it only costs one. So Moses feeds the people, and so she will be more prosperous and expand her workforce faster. Homer, on the other hand, who wrote the, you know, the great epic poems, his poetry will inspire the society with tales of heroism and daring do. And what that will translate to is, well, each round you have an extra dollar to, or an extra resource to spend on military, and up to two of your warriors can produce one culture each. Because society will be so inspired by you know, the Odyssey and the Iliad and, and the tales of heroism, the society will make it easier to expand the military class because that's where heroism is. And in fact, expanding your military will actually add culture, which is a way to win the game. So, see, these are both good. Getting a bigger population is a big deal. This is just a lot of points up front. I think I'm going to take this one. Yeah, I'm not really sure which one's better. I'm sure people would argue about that online. I'm not an expert on the game. I'm going to take this one, though, because it'll let me demonstrate a little bit more interesting stuff. It'll let me demonstrate military and whatnot. 
Okie doke. Now, remember, when I took my Colossus, it immediately went into play. Wonders are the only card that does that. Every other card you take goes into your hand. So Jan has a hand of one now. And now at the end of her turn, she does the exact same thing as me. Oops, I've knocked over all of her, her markers. Oh dear. Oh, I've messed it all up. All right, there we go. Uh, it's very easy to knock these around. Do be careful about that. Jen's going to do the same thing as me. She, at the beginning, generates one science because she also has one lab. She generates two food and two bronze. And so her turn is over. Okay, and now, 15 minutes into this video, we can have the first proper turn of the game where we will do all of this crazy stuff. So let's get going. Uh, first thing that happens on my turn, the card row. We refill the card row. And if it's the end of an age, i.e. if we've gone through all the age one cards, we do some special stuff, but that won't be for a while. So we basically remove cards and, and refill the row. Let's do that. I'm playing a two-player game right now, and you'll notice, 4-3-2. In a two-player game, since neither of us took them, all these opportunities are lost. They went to some other society that's not in the game. These are gone. If it's a three or four-player game, fewer of them would have been lost. These are all gone, they're removed from the game. Everything else slides, 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 slides down, and we refill up. And now, this is the true end of the Age of Antiquities. I'm gonna spend one, two, three, four, five of the A cards, and the remaining two will never see the light of day. They are removed from the game. Part of the random setup, I guess you could say. So basically, these two A's and these A's never got a chance. But hey, Julius Caesar and uh, Hammurabi are available. And Engineering Jesus, the Library of Alexandria, the Hanging Gardens. Oh, I love the Hanging Gardens. They're nice. All right. From now on, any future fills of that will come from, will, you know, we're basically leaving the Age of Antiquities now and moving into the Middle Ages. But as this fills up more and more, the transition will happen. So anyway, that was the card row phase. Happens at the beginning of every turn. And so obviously things that we didn't get, take got cheaper, new stuff came out. Now, if there had been a war declared in a previous turn, that would be dealt with. But remember, well, obviously no war could get declared at the beginning of the game. And even if it could, I'm dumping war, so we're just going to skip that. Political actions. If we had any military cards, and we don't have them yet, we could play one of them now to, do a, to play a future event, to set up an event, to do aggression, to declare war, to propose a pact, or cancel a pact. Now, obviously, in a peaceful game, none of these things happen, so it's just about preparing for a future event. But we don't have any military cards yet, so we're going to skip that too. And if we had excess military cards, We'd have to, you know, at the beginning of the game, because I have these two guys, I can have up to two military cards in my hand. So if I had more than that, I'd have to discard now. Also, I have a hand limit of four for the civics cards. And Jen, remember, she's got her leader, so she's got three, one of her four cards. But anyway, I don't have to discard because I don't have any military cards. And now, the crux of the game begins. All these actions, I can spend these six pips to do any combination of all these actions in any order I want. And those actions are take more cards, like you just saw me do for various costs, Increase my population. I could spend, right now, two food, but it gets more expensive as the game continues. I could spend two food to get some more workers, oopsie, to get some more workers who could you know, be assigned to stuff and in increase the size of my civilization. I could build a mine, a farm, or a building if I have the resources and the worker pool. I could upgrade a mine, farm, or building. I could destroy a mine, farm, or building. I could construct, and now this is going to be interesting to me, I could start constructing my wonder. Which again, costs you know, an action pip. I could declare a revolution, which means if I had a, a new government card in my hand, I could basically skip my entire turn and have a bloody revolution and replace despotism with a new form of government. But that, I don't have any, so that's not gonna happen. Or I could play an action card, you know, like these yellow cards I've gotten, I could play them and get one-time benefits. Also, remember I have two red military discs. With those military discs, I could play another, I could build another military unit, upgrade a unit, destroy a unit, or play tactics, which I don't have any of yet. So those are all the things I can do right now. Let's move this out of the way. And what am I gonna do? Remember, I want to build the Colossus of Rhodes. But to do it, I need to, as it said, one of the actions I can do is I could spend one action, but to do it, I'd be spending one action to put three resources down to build half of the Colossus. Beginning of the game, I've only got two resources. I don't have enough resources to build the first phase. So I think what I want to do is I want to get me another mine so that I'm generating more goods so that I can start working on the Colossus. So my first action I'm going to do, first of four civic actions, is I am going to build me another mine. Remember, I've got this out-of-work guy who's not really doing anything. He's my, my seventh tribe of my civilization. This tribe is going to go into the bronze 
building. So I basically move them up from here up to here. And this is a little reminder of what it costs. A farm, a mine, an urban building, you, it costs me a white, which I've just spent moving it out here. It costs me whatever the blue is. In this case, to build a bronze mine requires two resources. And what do you know? I happen to have two resources. So it's going to cost me two resources, or you know, which, which represent you know, two disks. So I'm going to spend two resources to move my guy up. And so these resources come back down here into my potential future goods I could build. And so my first of several actions I can do was I built a bronze mine. And that means at the end of the year, I'll generate three bronze, which means next year I'll have three bronze to build on my Colossus. So that was a nice start. <clears throat> what else am I going to do? I think for my second action, but see now I've tied up all my workers. I don't have any more workers. So a second action, I will expand my population. And so this guy comes up here and he goes into the worker pool and to remember it, it costs me to, to, well, basically to build a new worker, actually there's no reminder of it, but whatever, to build a new worker costs two food. What do you know? The, the start of the game is basically set up to make these first turns really easy. I'm going to spend two food to get a, another worker. That was my second action. And now I've used up all my excess food and all my excess resources to build another mine and get another worker. And I've got two more actions and a military action. Now, unfortunately, I have no more resources and no way to get them. And to, get, to build a warrior would need more resources, more resources, more resources, resources, resources. So pretty much I can't build any more of those things until I generate some more bronze. So I'm pretty much done with that. But what else can I do? Well, there's a whole bunch of cards up here I could grab. And um, if I had more, well, I can't do any more food. So really, of all the stuff I could do with my civic actions, the, I'm going to use my last two to take one or two cards because I've run out of resources so I, and food, so I really can't do any of these other things. So with my last two, am I going to take one, or am I going to take two one-value cards, or am I going to take one two-value card? Let's look at it. Let's think about it. Now, oh, that work of art is still there. It didn't get removed. Six points. You know what, what the heck, I'm going to take it. I'm going to spend one of my remaining two actions. Bloop. I'm going to add this to my hand. Now, normally it costs one action. So I could spend my last action to actually play this and immediately score the six points. But here's the problem. A rule about action. This is not true for anything else. It's only true for the yellow action cards. You cannot play them on the turn you grab them. So this has to wait till next turn. So this is my starting in my hand. Now I've got one more action. So I'm going to take another card. Unfortunately, that means I couldn't get any of these more expensive cards, but I could still take, well, now I can't take the pyramids because I cannot start a second wonder until my first wonder is done. So I can't take that. I could get an ideal building site or, hey, Moses or Aristotle. Aristotle has become available. Him, every, you know, he's, he's really a devotee of science. Every time you take a technology card from the card row, you score one science. So science breeds science under the rule of Aristotle, but I think... Let's see. Well, those are all good. But you know what? Maybe I don't want to get any of these because once I have established a leader, I can never take another age and another leader from the antiquities era. You know, because these guys are all from the antiquities. Moses, Aristotle, Alexander, Julius, and uh, Hammurabi. Once, you know, Jen, once she plays, Homer cannot replace Homer with anybody else. That'll be the power she's got until era one, Middle Ages leaders start coming out. And so I'll be stuck with that leader for a while. So I want to grab one of these or do I want to wait a little bit and wait for um, Hammurabi or Julius Caesar to get a little bit cheaper? Or maybe even wait for a level one guy to come out. Let's see. Uh, or do I just want to start? Well, now, if I'm going to focus on really trying to get the Colossus up, I'm going to spend all three of that I'm going to take Moses. Why not? I'm just going to take Moses. So my last two actions were I took two cards. Okay. <clears throat> and, and so that means Julius Caesar and Hammurabi, they're dead to me. And to Gen 2 because I can't even draw them. Once I, if I have a, an era, an antiquities era, I cannot draw any other antiquity leader card. Okay. So those are all my civic actions. I've still got two military actions. Remember the military actions are all about training warriors. But to train warriors, I would need, do, 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 what do you call it? Or, and I've used up all my ore to work on the Colossus. Oh, I forgot. Uh, oh, no. No, I haven't built, worked on the Colossus yet. So, I have no more ore. There's nothing I could do. Instead of building a second warrior, I could fire this guy. That's called, it's called destroying a unit. I could fire him and bring him back down here so he could be assigned to something else. If I don't want any war-like ways, I could bring it, fire him and then next turn he could become a philosopher or he could become a religion, you know, start a religion. There's lots of stuff. But for now, I think I'll just leave it alone. 
or will I? Do I just want to walk away from war? No, I'm not going to because, you know, even in the friendly game, having a strong military has a lot of benefits. So I'm going to hold on to that anyway. So that means there's really nothing I can do with these military. I can't upgrade. The only thing I could do is I could downgrade a guy. So I'm not going to use them. But that means I'll get to do something at the end of the turn. I'll talk about that at the end of my turn, which is coming up now. I've, I've passed on doing any military actions. So I'm now done with the civil and military action phase. And now we move on, as you saw before, to the production and maintenance phase, but a couple more things are gonna happen. Specifically, that last step, draw a military card. So you can maybe draw one military card for each unused. So I'm gonna to get to draw two military cards at the end of my turn. Let's go on ahead and generate some goods. Once again, first of all, I generate culture and science. I still have no means, I've not earned religion or anything. I, I'm not, gener so I, my, I don't earn any points. But remember, I've still got my lab, so my science goes up to two. Then, I start generating again. I generate my two farms, I generate two more, and my three mines generate one, two, three. So next turn I'll have enough for the Colossus. And I'm still at zero, I'm nowhere near getting to two corruption yet, so I've still got a lot of leeway. So, and it means I don't have to pay corruption, I don't have to pay consumption. After that, I draw military cards. I, it's at this point I use these last two and I can draw one for each one, two military cards. Let's look at them. I got a scientific breakthrough. <clears throat> ah, and a border conflict. Now there's several different kind of cards could be here. This is where all the nasty war and attack cards would come, but there aren't any in here. So the only things we're gonna find in a peaceful game are events like a scientific breakthrough or a border conflict. And so, you know, when this happens, the weaker civilization loses one building and the stronger one gets three ore. So this is not me and Jen fighting, but if this event ever comes around, if I've got a stronger military, I will benefit and Jen will suffer. So that's why even in a peaceful game, it's worthwhile pursuing a stronger military. That's why I didn't give up my warriors. And I got a scientific breakthrough, which is good for everybody. Everybody immediately gets to score additional science. These go in my hands, I'll play them on my next turn. That was the end of my turn. Jen's first turn of the game. And remember, she's got this. Well, first of all, as always, no, I, mean, I, didn't, I didn't take the idea of building site. The pyramids, these are gone. And Jen would have loved to have built those pyramids, but they're gone. Because again, these things go out. Everything gets cheaper. <laughs> Although Jen doesn't care about those leaders because she's already gotten one. And now you'll notice, ah, an iron mine, which is an upgrade to a bronze mine. Bread and Circuses, the first arena, which can provide military strength and lots of happiness. People love their entertainment. Drama, more happiness and lots of culture if you start building the dramatic arts. But it requires five ore. And as you can see, all of these, these are technologies. This requires five science, or you know, we, because the light bulb, we call them ideas. It needs five ideas. And right now, I've only got two and Jen's got one. Let's see what else we get. And another wonder, the great wall of whatever society it is, which will bring happiness and culture and will create your military strength, but it takes a while to build. It takes four actions, but not as many resources. Okay, so that's what's come out and those are new things for Jen to play with. Jen then, once again, we don't do the outcome of war in a friendly game. She has no military cards, but if she had military cards, like I do, this is where she'd play them. And then she discards excess cards. So she's going straight to playing her actions. First action, Wait, no, no, I was gonna say first action is Homer. Um, yeah, what the heck, first action, Homer, boom! Her society now has a leader. And basically, every round you have an extra resource. She only has two resources, but she can, she can assume she has three because of Homer's, the inspiration that Homer's given to the society. And up to, to her first two warriors produce culture. She's got one warrior. So through Homer, the warrior class is now generating in her society culture. Jen now has a little bit of culture thanks to Homer and is going to start earning culture points at the end of, the t of her turn. All right, that was her first action. But because she's got a leader, she won't be able to get any more leaders. She could replace Homer with, let's see if I can find one. Ah, they're in here somewhere. With, a, with, a, with an era one leader. And then you could replace an era one leader with an era two and so on. Alrighty, that was her first action. She's got three more. I think she wants to take advantage of this warrior thing. So her second thing is, she's gonna trade another warrior. So this guy, her second action, she's gonna trade a warrior. So this unwork, remember me, I made another mine. Jen's gonna make a second warrior. And now that costs two resources, but remember, Homer gives a bonus, so it only costs her one. So she only has to give up one of her bronze, 
to make this warrior. And because she now has two warriors, she, her culture has increased, she is generating two victory points every turn for as long as Homer, is Homer's teachings influences her society as long as she still has two warriors. Now she can get more warriors, but it won't increase anymore. So, net benefit for Jen, she's ahead in the war game, she's earning points, and it's cheaper for her to make more. Well done, Homer, nice job. Don't, alrighty. So she's still got two more actions. What does she want to do now? Now, unfortunately, she only has one bronze left. That's not really enough to do anything else. I think, first of all, she is going to spend her two food to increase her workforce. That's nice. So that was her third action. Um, and now, but again, she would need another resource to be able to do any of these things. So she can't really build another building. She could fire somebody, like I talked about. She's not ready to do that. All these things are generating for her. There's no reason to fire anybody yet. So I think for her last action, she's going to draw one new card. And she only has one, so she can get the light. Oh, she could start her own wonder, like I am. Or, well, she can't get these. These are dead to her. She already has a leader, an, an, an antiquities leader. She could, be, she could be frugal. In a future turn, she could play this to increase her population for full price. But, and then, you know, and I would actually produce food. So... Basically, it would cost her two to produce a guy, but then that guy it would really only cost one because you get a one discount. So she could increase her society for a little bit cheaper or rich land. Hmm. Or does she want to go down the wonder route herself? Let's see. And what's the Library of Alexandria do? Once you've built it, and it requires four actions and a total of six items or six resources, you may have one extra civil card and one extra, so it increases your hand size, and it starts earning victory points and science for the rest of the game. So that'd be nice. But I think Jen's gonna go a different way. I'm gonna go the wonder direction. Jen is gonna go, she's gonna try and start building a, a new building next turn, I think. Yeah, she will, okay. So she's taking this, it goes in her hand, those are her four actions, and now again, she's got these two militaries. Oh wait, oh, dur, 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 dur. That was dumb. Um, when the first thing Jen did was she hired Homer. Boom. The second thing she did was she hired a warrior. That was done with a military disc, not with a white disc. Then the third thing she did is she hired a, another worker. The fourth thing she did was she got another card. So now she has another action. So I guess, what the heck? Now that means she could have actually taken a level two card, but what the heck, she's just going to take frugality. And now, sorry about that, I forgot that you know, she hires the warrior with her red, not with her. And so now she's got one red left over. She can't hire any more warriors. She could fire them, but then she'd be losing the Homer benefit. So she's going to pass with this. And now it's the end of her turn, so she's going to generate goods. Well, first of all, she's generating her science. And if we look over here, Jen generates one science every turn. So she's caught up with me. And Jen, because of Homer, generates two points. One, two. So she is screaming into the lead on points. She now has some culture. It's a military culture, but still, I mean, I don't know if that's what Homer really had in mind with his epic tales of heroism, but that's how it's translated. Okay, so that's that. And, she, but she didn't have any corruption, she didn't have to pay any goods, and so now, her other thing, she didn't use this military, so at the end of her turn, she gets to draw a military card, which is a tactics card, a heavy cavalry card. What these are, if Jen ever gets three cavalry units, right now she has two um, what do you call it? Two infantry units. If she gets cavalry technology and then gets three cavalry units, she can form them into an army of cavalry, which will give her four extra. So that's not that exciting. She's really kind of bummed with that because that's going to take her a while to get to. But anyway, that's what she drew. That was the end of her turn. Now it's my turn again. The first thing I do is these go away. Bye-bye. Everything slides down. Do -do 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 and some more level one stuff comes out. And efficiency upgrade. Uh, Universitas Carolina. Alrighty, another wonder. Swordsman. So, with Swordsman, I, you know, this is an upgrade to Warriors. If you get, do this, it would cost three ideas, three science to, to get this technology, and then it costs three, this is something Jen might go for. But anyway, we'll worry about that later, because she can upgrade her Warriors to Swordsman now, and they're worth two instead of one on the military strength. And then was the last one. Code of Laws requires six ideas. And right now, we're not very smart. We only have two ideas. This requires six. But it means as long as you have, for the rest of the game, you'll get one extra action because you have a lawful society. All right. Now, so that was all of that. And so I've, I've refilled. 
Still not going to do any war, but now I've got some military cards, so I'm going to do a political action. And remember, I don't have any aggression, war, pact cards, so I'm going to play a future event. So let's come back over here and look at these. These are both event cards. Jen didn't get an event card. She got a tactic card, which is something she can play to make her army stronger. Anyway, so I could put in the event scientific breakthrough or border conflict. Because I have now seen the Jen is, is pulling into the lead of me on military, I don't think I want this to come into effect because there's a good chance Jen will be the winner. If I'm the weakest civilization in terms of military when this comes out, I will lose a building, farm or mine, and Jen, so I'm not going to play this, at least not until I'm a bit more confident that I can catch up with Jen in military. So I'm going to play a scientific breakthrough. When this comes about, every civilization will score, get more science. Now, this does not, I'm going to play this right now, it doesn't happen now. This is a future event. What this means is, I have done something in my society so that somewhere down the road, this will ha that some something my society has done will cause a worldwide scientific breakthrough later. It goes into the future events, and because I've done this, I score one point. You know, and if I had done a level two one, I'd score two points, or a level three, three points. So this is going to happen later. But every time a future event gets set up, a current event happens immediately. So. These are shuffled, these are randomly drawn, we don't know what they are, but the first four are always nice. Everybody benefits from these first ones. So I'm going to draw one, and boom! The development of trade routes has happened. Every civilization scores one science and produces one resource and one food. So hooray! In the early days, we have learned how to do trade routes. So everybody gets one science, boom, oops, oops careful. Everybody uh, gets one more goods and one more food. So I get one more good and food and Jen gets one more food and good. Oh and look at that. So I've got four. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. And so, and I scored one point for, and you now once all three of these are gone, these ones will move over and so it's going to be a while before the scientific breakthrough comes out. So if I had put, the, this border conflict wouldn't happen for at the very least one, two, three, four turns I think and it could be more because they get shuffled. So if I put it down, it would give me plenty of time to build up my military, but still, I'm going to do this because I know it will benefit me. And I, and I know this is coming. So I could be trying to increase my scientific rating so that when it comes around, it will benefit me even more. So I've got a plan because I've set this in motion and Jen doesn't know what it is. So that was playing a future event. And now we, and if I had excess cards, I don't. I discard and now we go back and I've got all my actions again. I've got these things I want to do. I guess for starters, what the heck, I'll just get it done. I'm going to do one, a work of art. One, two, three, four, five, six. No one will forever get, for, will forget my David. It's so beautiful. And you know what the heck, I'll do my second action. I'll get Moses out. So I got a leader now, which makes it cheaper for me to do population. Third thing I'm going to do, I am going to spend three resources to build half of my Colossus. So I take three resources, one of them I put over here to indicate I'm halfway done, and the other ones just go back to my stock. And I've got one more action now, and I've played all my cards, because it was Moses that, and I've, and I've only got one resource, so again, it's not enough to build anything else. So I guess I'm going to take another card with my last action. And, oh no, I got, really I could do two things. I've got some excess food. And remember, Moses makes it easier for me to recruit. So I could use his power and recruit somebody for only one food instead of two. Or I could use my last action. And well, I, again, I can't take Caesar or Hanabi, or, or Hammurabi. But, and I, I know I can't take these. I cannot take, because I'm still working on a wonder. But I could get engineering genius before it disappears. Build, oh, look at this, Engineering Genius. My last action, I am taking Engineering Genius. I can't use this right now, because remember, you can't use it oh, actually on the turn you get it, but on my next turn, build one stage for two less, so I will finish my Colossus tomorrow and start reaping the rewards. There we go, that was the end of my turn. At the end of my turn, I increase my science. Still, I only have one lab, so my science is just slowly eking up. I have no culture, so I score no points, unlike Jen, who has some culture. See, because I'm still there at zero. My farms generate two more food, one, two. My bronze mines generate three, one, two, three. And you can see now that I am starting to stockpile a lot of food. And if I keep stockpiling without using some of it, pretty soon I'm gonna start paying for corruption. So that's something I gotta worry out for. But I don't have to pay, I don't have enough work yet, so I don't have to pay consumption costs yet. Then into my turn, once again, I didn't use either of my military. 
to hire somebody or anything like that, so I get to draw two military cards. And what are they? Ah! So the other two, how nice, the other two types of cards. This is a potential colonization. I can put this in on my next turn, so it'll come up later. You know, later on, once these are gone and these come out, eventually this will come up, and it will be a territory that Jen and I can basically go into an auction over, and we can auction away by sacrifice our warriors, our swordsmen, whatever we have, and whoever sacrifices the most gets to claim this developed territory as a colony. And that means they would immediately score three science and permanently get one extra civic and one extra, or I'm sorry, no, this is, this is a, no, they would immediately get one extra population added and one extra resource added. So these are worth fighting over, or you know, bidding over. It's not really a fight, it's basically, if you got a lot of warriors, you can definitely win the bid and get this, but then you have fewer warriors and then maybe somebody else is stronger. But anyway, so this goes in my hand. And this one, these are basically secret instant cards you can play to surprise your opponent. If Jen could attack me, if we had any attack cards, when she attacks me, I could surprise her because I had an extra two defense she didn't know about. Or during a colonization attempt when we're bidding, I could surprise her and have an extra one colonization she doesn't know about. But here's the thing, I now have three military cards and my maximum re military hand size is two. So I'm going to have to play one or discard later. That was the end of my turn. Jen's turn. Hanging Gardens and Alexandria go away, but Jen has decided she is not going after Wonders. Because I don't need to to demonstrate them. New stuff comes out. A Bountiful Harvest. A Printing Press. Oh, very nice. A great way to get culture and science. And irrigation, an upgrade from our regular agriculture. So every yellow pip we put on generates two food instead of one. Okay, it requires three ideas and so on. Now, it's Jen's turn. She, ha she has a military card she can't play. This she plays normally. She's gonna, and so she's gonna go. And I'm gonna stop right there, because my God, I'm at 41 minutes already. And, okay, but I definitely I think you got a rough idea of the flow of the game and how you slowly, in the early days, it's very slow going, but you start to build up, you know, a bunch of resources that you can use to build a lot of stuff and get more population so you have more workers, so you can do more resources, so you can change your government, so you get more action, so you can get better leaders, etc., etc., all. Now, if you want to watch some more of that, I am going to do an extended run through, although 41 minutes, 42 minutes, sorry, I think was enough to get an idea of how this game plays, but I'll keep on playing on the extended playthrough or go directly to final thoughts, your choice, in five, four, three, two, oh, I haven't even talked about bonus points at the end of the game, I'll talk about that in extended, one, thanks for watching everybody, talk to you later, bye-bye.